Hi guys, welcome back to Pipro vs YouTube channel where curiosity meets the code. Today we'll be discussing about how to create a random sound generator using Python. But before that, we'll be checking the packages pre-installed in my system. So the first command that I'm going to execute in command prompt is pip list, where you can see all the packages with the versions. So it can give a look about what package is what version and update it accordingly. So you can take a look onto your packages. If not installed, please do install it. You can just Google how to install and there will be a command for that to execute in command prompt. Another command to check for all these is PIP freeze, which gives a similar output where packages with the version will be mentioned. So let's quickly just dive into the program, starting with importing the packages that are required for the programs. So here you can see we have imported NumPy, which is a numerical computing library. And also we have imported PyGame, which is used for multimedia applications such as video game development, providing functions for working with sounds, graphics, and input devices. And also we have also imported PyQTQ widget and Q application main window, QV box layout widget, and push button which are used for GUI application with PyQt. So moving on, we have a class called sound generator under which you have a function called init, which is a GUI interface. And we have init PyGame. And also we have definition of face sound. And also we have a function for generating of sound. So let's go one by one. Firstly, starting with the function of init self. So here you can see def init self. This line defines the constructor method for sound generator class, which is called when a new instance of the class is created. And we have super dot init. This line calls the constructor for the super class, which is the Q main window, initializing the inherited attributes and methods. And we have self dot set window title sound generation. So we are setting the title as sound generation and the geometry, the self dot set geometry, 100 comma 100, 400 comma 400. So the first two are the X and Y coordinate and later followed with width and the height required. And coming on, we have central widget is equal to Q widget. This line creates a new instance of Q widget class which serves as a central widget for the main window. And coming down, you have self dot set central widget. This line sets the central widget of the main window to the central widget created above. And we have layout is equal to QV box layout. This line creates a vertical box layout for arranging widget vertically. And we have self dot sound, sound buttons is given into an array. This line initializes an empty list of sound buttons. And we have a for loop for i in the range of 20. This line starts the loops to create 20 sound buttons. We have sound buttons is equal to q push button sound i plus 1. This line creates a new push buttons with the label indicating the sound number, which is sound 1, sound 2, etc. And we have sound button click dot connect lambda idx is equal to 1 self play sound IDX. This line connects the click signal of the button of the play sound method passing the index i of the sound button as an argument. And we have layout dot add widget sound button. This line adds the sound buttons to the vertical layout. And also we have self dot sound buttons append sound button. This line appends the created sound buttons to the sound button list list for later references. We have self status label is equal to Q label. This line creates a label to display the status or information about the currently paying sound. 
and we have layout dot add widget cell status layer. This line adds the status layer to the vertical layout, and we have central widget dot set layout. This line sets the layout of the central widget to the previously created vertical layout, and we have self dot init pay game. This line creates init pay game method to initialize the pay game library for the sound playback. So let's move on to the next module. So the next function is pi game cells. So here the line defines the init pi game method, which initializes the pi game mixer for sound playback. And we have pi game dot mixer in it. This line initiates the pi game mixer module for sound playback. So moving on to the next module, sorry, next function, we have play sound method. So what happens in play sound method? Firstly, the line defines the play sound method, which is called when a sound button is clicked, and we have frequency is equal to np dot random gradient hundred to two thousand. So this line generates a random frequency value between hundred to two thousand hertz for the sound, and we have duration is equal to np dot random uniform point one to one. Random duration in seconds. So this line generates a random duration between 0.1 second to one second for the sound. And we have sound data is equal to self dot generate sound frequency duration. This line generates the sound data using the generate sound method based on the random frequency duration. And we have sound is equal to pi game dot mixer sound sound data. This line creates a pi game sound objects. From the generated sound data, and we have sound dot play. This line plays the sound using the Pi Game Sound Playback functionality, and we have self status label set playing the sound frequency so and so. This line updates the status label to indicate the details of the currently playing sound. It includes the index frequency and the duration of the music that has been played. Moving on to the next function, we have generate sound. So here, basically, we are having the line defines the generate sound method, which generates the sine wave sound based on the given frequency and duration. And we have a the sample rate for the audio data, and we have num samples is equal to int sample rate into duration. This line calculates the total number of samples based on the sample rate. And duration of the sound, and we have t is equal to n p dot lin space zero comma duration num samples end point is equal to false. This line generates a linearly spaced array of the time values representing the duration of the sound, and we have wave is equal to n p dot sine two into n p dot pi into frequency into t. The line generates a sine wave length with the specific Specified frequency over the given duration, and we have wave is equal to into three two seven six seven, which this line scales the wave amplitude to fit the range of sixteen bit integers, which is minus three two seven six eight two plus three two seven six eight, and we have int. This line converts the wave data to the sixteen bit. Signed integers, which is the format expected by Pi Game for the sound back, and we have the return wave. This line returns the generated wave data as the output of the generated sound method. Moving on to the code that executes this entire program, we have if name is equal to main. This line checks if the script is being run as a main program, and we have app is. This line creates a queue application instance which manages the GUI application control flow and the main settings. We have window is equal to sound generator. This line creates an instance of the sound generator class representing the main window application, and we have window dot show. This line displays the main window of the application, and we have SYX exit app execution. We have this line starts the event loop of the application by calling execution method of the queue application instance. The SYS dot exit calls ensures a clean exit from the application when the main window is closed or the application is terminated. So quickly, let's see the output of the program.
If you have learned something from this video, please do like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.